Okay, so in this video, we will find the integral of the following rational function. So, of course, we will use the method of partial fractions. Now, as the degree of our numerator is 1, and the degree of the denominator is 4, and 1 is strictly less than 4, we do not have to perform long division. So we can right away go to factoring our denominator and then decomposing our single rational function as a sum of partial fractions. So let's see, we have x plus 1 over, well there's a common factor of x squared, so we can factor this out, so x squared times x squared minus 4. But we can factor x squared minus 4 as x minus 2 times x plus 2. And now let's see, we will have two partial fractions coming from the x squared term, one from the x minus 2, one from the x plus 2 term, so in total, four partial fractions. So for x, we will go from x to x squared, and for x minus 2 and x plus 2 over both factors. Now for the numerator, we ignore the exponents, and each factor, x, x minus 2, and x plus 2, is a linear factor, so each numerator will be a single constant. And now as always to solve for these four coefficients, we want to go from an equality between rational functions to an equality between polynomials. So as always we multiply both sides of the equality by our denominator. So if we do so on the left, this will leave us with x plus 1, which will equal, you'll have a 1 over x times this will give you an x times x squared minus 4, or if you prefer factored completely, x minus 2 times x plus 2, plus b times 1 over x squared times this, this will cancel, and you'll be left with x minus 2 times x plus 2. Plus c times 1 over x minus 2 times this, so this will cancel and we'll be left with x squared times x plus 2. And finally plus d times 1 over x plus 2 times this, this will cancel. So we'll have x squared times x minus 2. Okay, so as always we try and use the first step in solving for the coefficients, choosing an appropriate value of x that will eliminate every coefficient but 1. Well, we can use x equals 0, we can use x equals 2, and we can use x equals negative 2. This will return 3 of the 4 coefficients. Let's begin with x equals 0. So the left will have clearly 1, which will equal, this term will vanish, so will this one and this one, and we'll be left with b times negative 2 times 2, so negative 4, so negative 4b, Divide both sides by negative 4, therefore b is negative 1 quarter. Let us now choose x to be 2. On the left we get 2 plus 1, 3, which will equal, so this term vanishes, this term vanishes as well, this term also, and we're left here with what? Well, 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 squared is 4, so 4 times 4 is 16, so we're left with 16 times c. Divide across by 16, and so c ends up being 3 over 16.
And now our last value, in this case, will be x equals negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, which will equal, so this term vanishes, so does this one, so does this one. That leaves us with what? Well, negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 minus negative 2 is negative 4. So negative 4 times positive 4, negative 16. So we have negative 16d. Divide across by negative 16, and you get that d is 1 over 16. And now the only coefficient we're missing is a. Well, we can then go back to our second method, which was writing this polynomial in canonical form, and then equating the coefficients on both sides. So here what I'll do is I'll simply pull out the x cubed term, the largest power of x, because we don't need to rewrite the entire polynomial in canonical form, therefore regrouping all the constant terms together, all the multiples of x together up to all the multiples of x cubed together, as we're only missing one coefficient. And so one equation will do involving a, and so we'll pull out the multiple of x cubed. Well, if you multiply this out, the x cubed will be coming from x times x times x, so it will be simply ax cubed. Plus, there will be no x cubed term here. Here this will be x squared times x, x cubed, so plus c times x cubed, so plus c. And here it will be again x squared times x, x cubed plus d, x cubed. So this is the coefficient of x cubed. On the right hand side of the equality, on the left there is no x cubed, therefore the coefficient is 0. And as we know c and d, we can now easily solve for a. So let's replace c plus d. Well, this is 3 plus 1, 4 over 16 is a quarter. Therefore, a plus 1 quarter equals 0. Therefore, clearly, a is negative 1 quarter. And we're done, at least as far as the coefficients are concerned. So now we go back and say, OK, well, we were trying to integrate this rational function. But instead of doing it directly, we will integrate the sum of these four partial fractions, as we now have all of the four coefficients. So if I call this i, and again we're just integrating this expression, which we will take this one instead. So i will be equal to the integral of negative a quarter over x plus b over x squared negative a quarter over x squared plus c over x minus 2 c is 3 over 16 plus d over x plus 2, 1 over 16. And of course this is with respect to x. Now, all of these integrals are trivial except for the first one, which is not so difficult if you think of rewriting 1 over x squared. So I'll do it on the side here. If you're trying to integrate 1 over x squared with respect to x, of course you should simply rewrite this as x to the negative 2, and you can now simply use the power rule. Add 1 to the exponent, you get x to the negative 1, divide by negative 1. I'll forget the plus c for now. And if I send this back down to the denominator and this up, what I am left with is negative 1 over x. And so the integral of 1 over x squared is negative 1 over x. 
and now the integration becomes very straightforward. If I factor first here the negative a quarter as a constant multiple, I am left with the integral of 1 over x, which is the ln of x in absolute value, minus a quarter times the integral of 1 over x squared, which we know is negative 1 over x, but negative negative is positive, and I can put the over x on our denominator. Then what? Plus 3 over 16, again, can be factored out, as it is once again a scalar multiple. And if we do so, we're left with integrating 1 over x minus 2, which of course is the ln of x minus 2 in absolute value, plus we factor 1 over 16 as a scalar multiple, and we're left with integrating 1 over x plus 2, which is, of course, the ln of x plus 2 in absolute value, and in the end, plus c. And so we're done. So if we go back to the original integral, the integral of x plus 1 over x of the 4 minus 4x squared, using the method of partial fractions, yields the following answer, which is again non-trivial. And that's it.